Virtualization technology is something that has been around for a long time in computing, but only recently have we brought it down to a level at the personal computer level and the server level that has really allowed us to scale out very large virtual environments. And because we have these very large virtual environments, we have a number of networking concerns that go along with it. Let's take a look at the fundamentals of virtualization. On this screen, I've just put four different devices here. Of course, many environments have hundreds and hundreds of servers, but we'll look at this at a very simplistic level. These four devices are different kinds of hardware platforms. And as you can see, there are different operating systems here as well, Windows Vista, Server 2008, XP, Linux. There could be other operating systems in this mix as well. With virtualization, we take these physical devices and we move them onto one physical device that is split up into tiny little virtual worlds. Obviously, the one device we would be putting this on is one that has a lot of resources available to it. There are a lot of CPU cycles. There's a lot of memory. There's a lot of disk space. Imagine taking a lot of separate machines and suddenly combining them into one physical device. You would really need to have a lot of resources available. And that's exactly how virtualization works. We have a single physical device. And we're using some virtualization software to be able to separate out inside of that physical machine these virtual devices. This virtualization software will allocate a certain amount of disk space and CPU resources and memory to Windows Server, to Windows Vista, to Linux, to Windows XP, and any other operating system that you might have in that virtual environment. This means that if I wanted to build a new server, I simply carve out a new section of that physical device to create a another virtual operating system world, allocate some CPU, allocate some memory, put some hard drive space to it. And now it acts, looks, and feels exactly as if it was a physical device. Obviously, the software that makes this happen is a pretty important piece of software. This is the Virtual Machine Manager. You might also hear this referred to as the hypervisor. This is more than a supervisor. It is something that is managing all of those different virtual systems and their relationships to the hardware in the physical world as well. So it's much more than a supervisor. It's a hypervisor. It also maintains a separation between all of the separate virtual machines. You don't want a Windows XP machine to suddenly see what's going on on a Linux device. These are virtual, but they need to maintain an absolute separation between those. So it's very important that the developers of this virtual machine manager make sure that it has the security in place to restrict visibility and access between all of these virtual machines, even though they're sitting on the same virtual device. There are a couple of types of virtual machine managers. Type 1 is one we refer to as a bare metal machine manager. That's when I would purchase a big server, and I would simply load this virtual machine software right on that raw server. There's no underlying operating system involved. There's nothing else that I have to think about from, from an operating system perspective. I simply load VMware's ESXi, which is a bare metal hypervisor piece of software. Or I would load Microsoft Hyper-V. There's no additional operating system software I have to go through to make this happen. That's a little different than a Type 2. Many people will run this virtual machine software right on top of their Linux host, their Windows host, their Mac OS X host. Really depends on the type of platform you're running. But it's often seen in desktop environments. When you deal with server environments, very large enterprise type environments, they are almost going to use that Type 1 where it's a bare metal and you don't even have to worry about an underlying operating system will load that virtual machine manager right on top of the physical hardware. I run Mac OS X on one of my desktops, and I run a virtual system right on top of that Mac OS X operating system. So this would be a Type 2 configuration. I'm using Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager. This Oracle VirtualBox allows me to then create a number of different operating systems. You can see I have a lot of different operating systems that I'm running, everything from Ubuntu to Microsoft Windows Server 2008 R2 to Windows 7 to Windows Vista to Windows XP, Windows 2000, and on and on. A lot of different configurations here. And I can start many of them up at one time. I can then have them network to each other behind the scenes. And there's networking hooks inside of the VirtualBox software that allows me to configure how the different systems could communicate across the network. Gives me a lot of power not only from an operating system perspective, but also from a networking perspective.
Here's an example of how you could run all of those things on your desktop. You've got your Oracle VirtualBox Manager here. And from there, I launched a Windows Server 2008 desktop. There's a Windows XP desktop and even an Ubuntu desktop. And they all run as separate machines. I can interact with each of them individually. And if I've configured networking between them, I can communicate between all of these different machines as if they were physical devices sitting on a physical network. Once you start talking about enterprise environments, of course, you're not talking about someone running their virtual systems and all of their virtual servers on a Mac or a Windows or a Linux platform. We're talking about a type 1 bare metal install. And because we're running usually tens or even hundreds of servers on a single piece of hardware, that piece of hardware needs to have a lot of resources allocated to it. And you often see these big virtual machine pieces of hardware like this that allow me to plug in multiple CPUs. And each one of those CPUs has multiple cores inside of it. They start at 128 gigabytes of RAM. So we're used to thinking about loading up a 2 gig or even a 4 gig max for our 32-bit Windows software. These servers start at 128 gigabytes of RAM. And very often, we are extending the size of them to be much more than that. And of course, all of these drive arrays right in the front, all of those are hard drives. So there is a massive amount of storage contained in these devices. And that makes sense because we're consolidating all of these servers onto this physical device. We used to have a data center that would have 100 servers, physical devices, all plugged in at one time. We've taken all 100 of those devices and moved them into this one one single physical device. Quite remarkable, the technology, when you think about it. This allows you to, of course, save a lot of room in the data center, gives you a lot more flexibility on what you can do with the hardware. And think of the cost savings just in electricity, just in cooling all of those systems. There is massive value here to take all of those disparate systems and virtualize them into one single physical server. It makes perfect sense. From a management perspective, we have a number of advantages in this virtual system. I don't have to buy a new computer, load an operating system, plug it into the network, find a place in the rack, and do all of the things you would normally think about with a physical server. Because this is completely virtualized, I can simply click a button in my virtual machine manager and build an operating system in a matter of minutes and be ready to go with an IP address and even pre-built software that I might have configured as a template. And then I can start managing the load across those. If one particular server is very busy at a particular time of the year, I can allocate additional memory and additional hard drive space to that server. As other servers become more utilized, I can allocate the resources in another direction. So when think about physical servers, where normally we'd have to unplug memory or upgrade memory in a device. We'd have to turn the machine off and physically put memory chips inside of it. In a virtual environment, I don't have to worry about any of that. If I need more hard drive space, I simply allocate more hard drive space. If I need more memory, I click a few buttons. And now that particular operating system system has more memory allocated to it. Huge advantages to be able to do this. And you can start to see now why these virtual servers and virtual networks have really become so popular in the data centers today.